Well, Merry Christmas, Brendan and Emma. Hello. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. See you guys, can I? Can we be on that too? No, that's for later. No, can Come you do on. that after? I don't think so. Dad, I it's see number you. two in your banter. Wait, can, can I please? See <laughs> God, can I please see it? That's what you have written down. Yeah. Read it for it. Tell me what. Tell me what it says, really Brandon. Good. It says intro: Magroom Friday night with the Moog Man. And then he also wrote: Lori ditched us. Why? Medical appointment. Well, now she even, so Lori was supposed to be on. So welcome to, we're here, Friday night in the mag room. All around the world you can hear them. Hey, hey, hey. Talking about losing kind of funny stuff. Hey, hey, hey. Mag room, mag room, the mag room. With Mega Yellox. Yeah. Mark's sister was supposed to be here. For and a Christmas extravaganza. Special Christmas episode. But I just think everything's good tonight. I think everything's going to be good. I like your enthusiasm. I was a little depressed with your sister. And first she just said, oh, my husband wants to go out to dinner. It's kind of a lame excuse. And then she exploded something in her neighborhood. Yeah. Like she could have just left it at that. She didn't have to... Like explode her whole neighborhood. Sounds, sounds a little made up, doesn't it? Yeah, like a transponder exploded. What do you mean? No, it's even it's not even a real word. Nobody knows it's what like, that is. It's like in a movie when something's lost, there's a transponder, right? Yeah, somebody was yeah somebody was trying to steal a bag of money from the president or something like that, and it ended up in Lori's hands, I guess. And it exploded, and now and they it have exploded. No power. Well, we got Emma and, Emma and Brennan. I know. So we're gonna have them. Okay, you can't just interrupt though. There's guests. Speak yeah, when always interrupt each other. That's that, but we're on the show. You're the guests. It doesn't because it doesn't list. It doesn't make any sense when you listen to it. So we'll give you a chance to speak. All right. So special Christmas episode. We have three things to do with our guests at the beginning here what i don't know what order we want well first what do you guys want to do okay what do you guys want to do trivia 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 right. first okay trivia. these are real these are kind of hard actually who okay. wants to go first so yeah that's the difficulty level kind of hard i'll go first which christmas song is among americans most disliked according to a 2020 YouGov survey my le- i hate i want a hippopotamus for Christ- christmas you know, mm. yeah, I know can, I we, hate that can we both guess I think we should kiss myself. Santa Claus because I yeah, think that's, that's our best. I saw mom kissing Santa Claus. It's annoying. You are both incorrect. Oh, oh, the Christmas answer Christmas. is Santa baby. I think it's because the person's like begging Santa to like give her everything. Much, yeah. It's clean. Yeah, it's very materialistic. I didn't, but I hate hippopotamus more, and I always root for them to actually get the hippopotamus. Not for the hippo. to- you know that hippos kill more human beings. Than any other animal on the planet, That's yearly. I, I knew that. Like everybody says crocodiles or whatever, but it's hippos. So do you think the per the person who was wishing for the hippopotamus actually wanted to like slaughter their family? She was probably terminally ill. Yeah. Oh, oh, maybe, maybe what you're saying. Like she gets it in the morning and then she just lets it loose on the family. Yeah. This one's for you guys. It's my podcast. Where does the name Chris Kringle come from? Yeah. <clears throat> Something really weird that we'd never guess. That's my guess. A weird place, yes. <laughs> like, looks like a Cliff Clavin guess. Yes. Three people who have not been in my kitchen. Um, somewhere okay. in Europe. Okay. Mark, what is your guess? <laughs> Where does the name Chris Kringle from, come from? Like, don't talk. Oh. I don't really have a good guess either. I want to guess the same thing as Brennan. Something okay. that I've never... What is something I don't know? <laughs> Tom, I copyright that. It's a modification of the German word Christkind... Or Christ Child. See, I never was gonna guess that. So there you go. Yeah, I didn't know that. So I, we were both right. Oh my God. When, ding, ding. <laughs> when did Christmas this Brian is for Corker. you guys? When did Christmas become a national holiday? Uh. And I'll give you the credit if you name the president who named it a national holiday. Oh, I think I know this. Yeah. Like Santa that Claus. A true Christmas book thing. Oh boy, you did some studying. I, when was I don't Santa Claus president. president? I don't know when. No president though. President Santa Claus. President Santa Claus. Can you guys can you guys guess the president? 
15. Friend, watch the president. I don't know. You just told me you knew the president. I said I forgot. No, you said I knew the president. <laughs> I don't know. I forgot, okay? I read that. I will name a president. So that's, that's the opposite of Nelly. Where's <laughs> Kringle? I'm going to do... A Blinken, okay. Why don't I go with a Roosevelt? I don't know. I don't know which Roosevelt, but a Roosevelt. Okay, well, both are wrong, so I'll do one person. Okay. Lincoln is close, and it's good he gets credit for a lot of things. Ulysses S. Grant. Hmm. All right, a few more. What was the original name of Clement Clark Moore's The Night Before Christmas? Mark, this one's to you. Uh... The afternoon before Christmas. Oh, Michelle said she knows. You want to go ask? You can go ask mom. Mom, what is it? <laughs> go run and ask her. <laughs> can I call her? Or Mark I answers. I don't have her number, do I? <laughs> Mark, we all know your dad's favorite, so you get extra time anyway. All righty. Mark, what's your answer? Uh, a, a Christmas visit. Mom said it was a visit from St. Nicholas. Oh, I was correct. Was. That is correct. Oh, Mark. I, Mark, I guess I, I think I did. I think I knew it the way you knew it, Brennan. I knew it, but I didn't actually know it. <laughs> yeah. Why do reindeer have hairy hooves? Hooves. Uh, style. It's mostly a style thing. <laughs> Wait, I know what it is. Because it looks cruel. No, I know. Yeah. Is. That's Can how I... you get a, a cool. If you're a cool reindeer guy and you have nice reindeer uh, foot hair. Hooves. Hairy hooves. Can I guess? Now that that girls will notice you a little more. Low their testosterone. Heads, their, heads, their heads naturally face down. You know, I see. So they see your hooves like, oh, hairy hooves. Look at that hoof. All right, what's your guess? Warmth above the snow. The answer is that gives them a good grip while walking on ice and snow. Oh, we were close, kind of. All right. Em and Brennan, what's the best-selling Christmas single of all time? Single. All I want for Christmas is you. Okay, Mark, what do you think? Oh, Same. I get, I can, do I have to guess something different? You do, yes. Uh, um... But that's it. That's the right answer, though. I think it's the Mariah Carey one. Okay, you're both wrong. Darn it! The answer is White Christmas by Bing Crosby. Bing Crosby? Huh. Sold 100 million records. Oh, jeez. Which classic Christmas movie inspired The Wonder Years? Mark, this is for you. I don't know what that is, so I'm going to Which classic the Christmas movie years. inspired The Wonder Years? Uh, I'm going to guess A Christmas Story. Okay, do you guys have a guess? Can you just tell me what the Wonder Years is? It's a TV is? show. Okay. Is it about is Christmas? It? No. Sure. Okay, Rudolph is their guess. The answer is actually a Christmas story. This is to you guys. In 2021, what percentage of U.S. adults intended to celebrate Christmas, Hanukkah, or Kwanzaa? Like 40 something? 40. 40 is their guess. Mark, what's your guess? Uh, 85%. The answer is 90. I was Whoa. super close. You were. You give that one to me, too. What? <laughs> no. I have to get the exact percent. You don't yeah, think I that's... I should have said what I needed. All right, Mark, this is yours. You, you got you gotta, one point down, two questions to go. This is exciting. What is the most popular Christmas cookie in the United States? Um... I think I know what it is. <laughs> Are you Googling stuff on your phone? No, I was pretending to. Um... <laughs> Snickerdoodle. Okay. What is your guys' guess? Yes. Gingerbread. Is it Christmas cooking? Yes. Oh, that's, what, that's what I meant. Like I think I meant gingerbread. Bread. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. But Snickerdoodle might be it. Go ahead. Yeah, you Number can. one is chocolate chip cookies. That is the... Can you guys cover your ears for a second? <laughs> that is not a Christmas cookie. Followed by sugar fudge and... Is this quarter two? None of those are Christmas cookies. You gov pull. All right, last question. This is for you guys first. So if you get it, Under protest. you win. Let's win this game. How many ghosts visit Ebenezer Scrooge in A Christmas Carol? Eleven. <laughs> what? Eleven. Mark Emma, is it four? Okay, Mark, do you have a guess? Three. Correct answer is four. Because oh. he gets visited by the, the buddy first and then the three ghosts oh, of the... That's right, his old boss. Yep. <laughs> should we do our Christmas... Emma left, but should we do our Christmas story? <laughs> Emma, come on over here. We're doing a story. She's like a... She's a talent and she can't last. Stretch me. All right, so Mark, you're going to be... Do you have your script? Because right. you are Maybe Captain here. Cookie. This is called... Dad, you still don't know what it's called. I'm back. This is called the Gingerbread Pirates. What? 
Was that all your? You got to be kidding me. All right. This is good. Should I do this on? Should I do a parent thing? Do you want me to yell at Emma about? You got. Oh, so I'm, I pulled up the the. I have my script up, so I can't. Yeah. I'm, I I don't see you guys, so I don't know what just happened. But why well, would just? She happen. just came. She had cut her nails, and she came back and <laughs> knocked her whole tissue envelope or a washcloth with all her nail shavings all over the floor. Guys, would you just treat the mag room with the respect of say something yep. like the Tonight Show or who's your favorite, Jimmy Fallon or somebody like that? Yep. That's, I've done this whole time and yelling. Pretend your dad's that good. You I'm not yelling. I'm just saying you have to can't talk over people and you're awesome. All right. This is called the Gingerbread Pirates and it's by Kristen Cladstrup. That sounds made up. <laughs> and it's Brennan's favorite Christmas story. I'm going to be the narrator, yep. and Brennan is Jim, and which one? Wavy? Wavy. Wavy? And you're Dots, yeah. and Me? the mouse, and Santa? Are you Santa as well? You don't want to be Santa? Okay, great. Do you want to do this anymore, or you're done? Me? No, I'm saying to Emma. I don't know, because you're just acting weird. Start All right, are we ready? It was Christmas Eve, and Jim and his mother... We're making gingerbread men. Let's make a pirate crew, said Jim, and so they did. The captain had a gingerbread cutlass and a peg leg made from a toothpick. Jim loved him better, best of all. You better leave some pirates out for Santa Claus to eat, said his mother. Not Captain Cookie, said Jim. At bedtime, Jim took the captain to his room. I wish you had a ship. He whispered as he climbed into bed. Then he lay awake, listening for reindeer hooves on the roof. Captain Cookie seemed to be listening, too. Jim fell asleep, but Captain Cookie went on listening. Where's my crew? He wondered. <laughs> and who's the Santa Claus who wants to eat them? <laughs> when the I'm house a Somali, was I'm quiet... A Somali, I'm a Somali gingerbread man. Okay. When the house was quiet... He swished his cutlass through the air. He tested his peg leg. Tap step, tap step, tap step. He climbed down into darkness. Then he ran. Step tap, step tap, step tap. He ran until he came into a cliff. He dropped his cutlass over it, then followed. He found his cutlass and then another cliff. So he did it all again, one cliff after another until he reached the bottom. Then Captain Cookie had a shock. A mouse was nibbling on his cutlass. Why, it half gone, cried the captain. He grabbed the cutlass and slashed at the air. Oh, it's ruined, he moaned, and off he went. Stomp tap, stomp tap, stomp tap. <laughs> Merry Christmas, <laughs> called the mouse. Christmas, what's that, thought the captain. Then he turned a corner and saw something that astonished him. A huge tree with stars in its branches. Ahoy! Called a voice. Looking up, Captain Cookie saw two pirates climbing down toward him. My crew! He thought. <laughs> the two men, Wavy and Dots by name, dropped to the ground. They jumped right up, but the captain saw that Dots had broken his hand. No cutlass? And now a wounded man! He thought. Just then a thump and a scrape. A black cloud puffed toward them. Run! shouted the captain they ran until they had to stop for breath who is that asked dots must be that cannibal santa claus said captain we, cookie we've got to get out of here before he eats us where's the rest of the crew on that cliff i think said wavy start climbing man up they went they're in jail cried dots when they reached the top save us <laughs> Save us! Save us! Save us! Wavy and Dot kicked at the prison walls. They tried in vain to move the roof. What about a rope and pulley from the ship? Said Wavy. What about the ship's cannon? Said Dot. There is no ship! <laughs> said the captain. Then he noticed a strange look on Wavy's face, and he whirled around. What he saw made him wish for his cutlass. A gigantic man was leaning over them. Young Jim always leaves cookies for me, but the plate was empty, so I came in here. Look out, boys, ordered the captain. The big man lifted the prison roof and peered in. 
Don't you eat my crew? Shouted the captain, raising his fists. The big man blinked. This is your crew? He said. Yes, said the captain. And who are you? I am Santa Claus, and I swear by my sleigh I won't eat your men. Sleigh? What's that? Some kind of sheep? That's right. Swears by his ship. Can't be all that bad. (laughs) Thought the captain. Still, he was suspicious. What are you doing here? He asked. Why, it's Christmas. Christmas? I wish somebody would tell me what that is. (laughs) Santa Claus laughed. Follow me. He said. I'll show you a bit of Christmas. Back beside the starlit tree, the pirates watched as Santa Claus reached into an enormous bag. What have you got there? The captain began. It's a ship! Wavy shouted. And the next thing Captain Cookie knew, his men were swarming, swarming its decks and rigging. There's cannons and cutlasses! Cried Dot. The sky glittered with stars. The captain rubbed his eyes. Real pirates, he thought. And a real ship. He turned to look back. Merry Christmas! He called, but Santa Claus was already gone. On Christmas morning, Jim's mother found an empty plate on his mantle. It looks like Santa Claus found the gingerbread men, she said. But Jim was admiring his presence. His favorite was the pirate ship and its pirate crew. The captain had a cutlass and a peg leg, and Jim loved him best of all. The end. I I had fun. (laughs) Nice. How come you guys don't look like you're having fun? Because Emma thinks I'm yelling at her because... I'm having fun. That's just how how he talks to people, Emma. (laughs) He doesn't talk to me like this when he's not with his friend. Only when he's on this podcast. He wants to be cool. Was he trying to be cool? Um, should we play their song? This is the new Christmas song from right, Maggie Yellox. <laughs> Wait, did you publish it? Is it on? Yeah, it's on iTunes and Spotify. <laughs> it really is, isn't it? <laughs> Everything. Christmas morning, you opened all your gifts. Outside, there's a lot of snow drifts. You're bored of your gifts already. Someone keeps asking for more. What do you do? Where do you go? Why not listen to the Magroom? It's your favorite show. Oh. Christmas. All around the world, you can hear them. It's like a suite of songs. Yep. That's the end. Wait, that ends it? Let's listen to the rest. Of it. It's just a There's beat. 13 more seconds. Yeah, it's a beat outro. A what? And I added a beat outro at the end. Let's listen to it. There's only five more seconds. What's that, this? Where you kind of yeah. break it down at the end? 
That was awesome. Yeah, I think Thank they you. did a great job. I think Brennan, rec- there was a lot, I told you, they almost broke up three times. <laughs> yeah, that was great. That, was, that made me laugh a lot. Can I stay here while you open presents? Because I really want to see what they Oh, you want us to do it right now? Yeah. We can do it now. Should I open your box first? That's a big box. Reaction. Oh, it's peanuts. One million dollars. That's all it is. <laughs> One yeah, million. I had to do that. I'm sorry. Ooh, can I have the packing peanuts? No. I really, please. Oh, boy. Make napalm out of this. One. Mark Specialties. It's a lamb. Oh, cool. It's from the bottle. What the is bottle? Tequila lamb. My dad sent you that same bottle. Yes. You were like, it would make like a good piece of furniture or something. I said it was nicer than any furniture I had. So it looked fancy. Nice lamp. Well, now you have a lamp made out of it. Woohoo. Great. You going to do your thing now? Oh, right. Yeah. Should I read it? Yes. Yes. No. Okay. Mark, the Sisk family makes a CD every year of songs we listen to, dance to, and have fun to. You shouldn't end your sentences with a preposition, Jared. <laughs> this is the- this is the set of the first 12 years of this project called Dancing in the Kitchen. Dancing with the N apostrophe after, you know, yep, D-I-N, yep. D-I-N, like that. You will love some and hate and hate some, hate <laughs> but all we ask is that you listen to each CD once. Enjoy a piece of a piece of the cis. Uh, enjoy a piece of cis. Of <laughs> cis. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy a piece of Sisk history. That's a little harder to say than it looks like. Sisk history. Love the Sisks. Sisk tree. Try saying that last one fast. There is no notes for volume one. It is lost to history. That's very so the, printout, the printouts are all the... So every year I oh, write okay. the CD with the tracks. Okay. So, so it's print out is... I, I didn't... I didn't have them for some reason. They saved weirdly. They used to they print out in CD size normally. Yeah. For some reason they did not. So. How come you used um, papyrus as the font for the first year? <laughs> then you went back to just Times New Roman for every other year. <laughs> just how I was feeling. Oh, thank you guys. That's very sweet. Do you guys ever have, have any of you guys ever heard of a song called "Raining Tacos"? Yes. Oh my god. I don't know that I've never heard it, but I like the name of it. What is it? It's raining tacos from out of the sky. Tacos. No need to ask why. Just open <laughs> your mouth and close your eyes. It's raining tacos. Yum, 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 yum. yum. It's like a dream. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. What is it like? Obviously, we can't. What kind of song? Is it like dancey? Or I don't get what the. Is it a novelty song? Don't. It is a kid's song. Lettuce, okay. Okay. <laughs> and I also have. Thank you guys. That's very nice of you. I'm, I'm curious to hear what the, the last 20 years of Sisk history is. Um, but I also have one more thing to open. Is it, yeah, this me is too. One? So this okay. is the one from Michelle, I think. Okay. So everybody at home, it is a Christmas ornament, a wooden Christmas ornament that's a microphone. It says on the air, and then the bottom says the Mag Room, established 2022. And here, tell me if there's anything, any like a detail you notice about it, Jared, that, that it. tells you that a lot of thought was put into it. What, did, like she, it. what did she? What did she? What did she notice about the Mag Room? Maybe I, I could be wrong. This could have just been, uh, but I bet I'm right. The the um, the font that she used. Oh wow! I like that. I like it. No. <laughs> okay. No. Well, if you know, it's the same font we have on our, our the picture we have where it says the mag room on the. Uh, Mom, yes, that is the Mom same. Thought. That, oh, she thought about that. She so, told me all about. Her. Thank um, you very much, Michelle. Also, Thank you guys for the song. To, oh, go ahead. Going to the Sisk family tradition of uh, Jared got his early, but every Christmas Eve morning they all That's find. Nice. Yeah, they all find um, an ornament at their place at the table. So that's Jared that's just opened his early. So you okay. can this year in the Sisk family ornament. Uh-huh. So it took place, yeah, it took part in two Sisk family traditions tonight. Mom deserves years of ornaments. Well, thank you guys. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> All right, so like I said, this was an article you sent me called The World's 13 Weirdest Christmas Traditions. I'm not going to read all of them, but I thought there were some interesting ones here that we could respond to. 
The first one was um, so um, these the Venezuelans go to this daily church service called early morning mass in the week leading up to Christmas, but they in the capital. It's customary to travel to the church service on roller skates. <laughs> that's just crazy. That's, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, what do you do funny, once you I get there? I see that going on. But you mean, do you take the roller skates off or do you go to inside with the roller yeah. skates on? I bet you ride there, you roller skate there with a backpack and you take your, your shoes off. and. Okay. Hey. You have like church shoes. You're not like roller skating into They're them. big on fireworks and stuff there too. I just think you. some people would be falling. Latinos know how to d- man. They like, like they, know how to, they know how to. They know how to have fun. Not, I mean, not like our festival, but it's sort of. No, 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 no. Saying Latinos can't come to our festival. That's no. They could. They, they could come. Yeah. They should come. Don't try to overwhelm us. That is what we're saying. Don't try to <laughs> out. Don't try to out fun us. All right. The next one was the Krampus in Austria. He's the bad cop to Saint Nick's good cop. Like me to you right now. He's a demon-like creature. With one task, to punish bad children before Christmas. (laughs) This was the best part. Men dressed in devil costumes roam the streets, carrying chains and a basket for abducting especially bad children and hauling them to hell. Seems pretty intense. I don't think they actually catch any kids and... Kill them? Yeah, I don't. They just do it for the... Just to scare people. They don't do it like in actuality. Well, so doesn't everybody know that? Well, maybe there's like an actor kid they get, like they abduct some kid who's like in on it, who then and everybody he, thinks. Yeah, he's one like, of the you know, he, he really did get taken. Yeah, like when you become the new boss, you're you supposed gotta to kill fire off. somebody. You got to kill people. Yeah. Well, so do they kill? They probably use a kid that's got some sort of terminal disease or something like that, right? That they could kill and. Well, they just move him to send another a area. Message. The kid goes around the country. It's a big country. Um, this one was from. Catalonia. So they create they create a character out of a log. They draw a face on it and give it a hat. And then they spend a fortnight feeding it fruit, nuts, and sweets. On Christmas Eve, the entire family beats the log with sticks <laughs> and sings a traditional song that translates to if you don't crap well, I'll beat you with a stick until the log excretes all its treats. So it's basically a pooping log that poops treats. First thoughts sounds like a fun tradition. I would be into it for sure. I like to hit, and I like to hit sh- like I'm good at hitting things with baseball bats and sledgehammers and the like. It'd okay, be fun to, that would be a fun tradition. Like the uh, the Seinfeld uh, airing Estivus. of grievances. Yeah, that's but the, today. The one actually. specific part, the airing of grievances. I see. That'd be very, it's very therapeutic to hit something like a log and beat Snickers bar. I mean, I've never done it before, but I've done we, things like that, you know? We kind of did that at dinner tonight. People were bringing up grievances, and I was like, wow, this is kind of like Festivus. We're all airing our grievances. Did it go well? No, nope. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of grievances come up around Christmas at the Sis family? So- uh, we were just talking about, we were, I was kind of talking about the. How Maggie Yellox had its fights and its stuff and what they both were doing and they both then were airing what the other person was doing that was making them mad and I was then uh, thought and maybe, just, maybe I shouldn't have brought this up. Does dinner. everybody and everybody? I, I don't know if everybody follows along, but Maggie Yellox is the term for Jared's two oldest yes. children. So Yellow Jared is her. Emma's favorite color. And a fox is Brendan's <laughs> favorite animal or something. But I just think it's funny when you refer to your two children as Mega Yellocks. I yes. think it's funny when you go to, by their fictional band name. I just Yeah. What's their real band? Always know. Well, right. I'm sorry. Yeah. They've now recorded two songs. This one sounded fun in Guatemala. So you have to clean up your house because they think devil and evil spirits live in the dirty corners of your home. And then they Probably pile do. everything into a huge heap outside and burn it all. I would be, I would, this would be, this was, I remember reading some of this article and that was the top of my list for things that I would love to have a big garbage fire on Christmas. That yeah, would be I think cool you would as like hell. That. I'd be into that for sure. Well, you don't be, burn it like, do you, and do you, it does, said they put a, a devil, an effigy of the devil on top. Yeah. That'd I be kind of cool. Oh, you do I that? Do that. I know you definitely do this. This is the last one I wanted to read. In Spain, it's customary to wear red underwear on New Year's Eve. Hot. Into it. 
So in this one town, there's a New Year's Eve run where you just wear the red underwear. I'd be, I'd go and attend this. I don't think I'd participate in, and I wouldn't be r- comfortable running in the, in the public eye in my underwear. Would you do like boxers, or I think you got to go tight, like a little. No, tight. I'm saying I don't want to do it at all. You're, what, are you going to make me do it now? I mean, you said they have fun. And no, I said I want. I said I just want to go watch. I would. Just, I just want to go participate. I don't want to participate. Just want to. kind of creepy. Stalkerish, yeah. No, it, I would watch. be the only one in town who just wanted yes. to watch and not. Everybody else is running. You're standing on the side in like a fur Steve, coat. Steve over there is not running. <laughs> He's just watching. He's walking his dog. I'm walking my dog. Why is it so weird? You know her name Steve in this town in Spain. Esteban. Esteban. <laughs> Como estas, Esteban? <laughs> Feliz oh, wait. oh wait, Esteban's taking off his sweatpants Hola. now. Okay, no, I... I did say the town has the highest incidence of pneumonia in the country. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you got, or you want to wrap, wrap up our up. wrap up our Christmas episode? Wrap up, get it? All right, produced by. You're gonna ignore that hilarious joke I just did. I love it. Produced by Krampus. <laughs> Theme song by Maggie Gallox. Email Muga and Cisco at gmail.com. Instagram and Twitter, Magroom Pod. I'll keep saying it, but send in ideas about the festival. I know the last episode just oh, published, yeah. so Mark was looking for festival a ideas. Game. Yeah. One more. I want like a station or a game or a vendor or whatever get picks. Will we send a t shirt to whoever's can't get be- picks? Uh, yeah, and, I, and I've already thought of a way to incorporate t-shirts into this thing. i got to get rid no. of some of these funny t-shirts. Are you getting a t-shirt gun? No, oh, no. but that's not a bad idea. <laughs> um, February 4th, Magroom Festival. Some people are coming. I heard food truck rumors. Food truck rumors. My sister's got, like, my sister has friends from Connecticut and coming down. And I think Well, if she fun. doesn't cancel, if she comes... Yeah, if her transponder doesn't explode in her <laughs> backyard. Maybe she'll have something like Ed will be like, hey, do you want to go to dinner? Is that one of those, one of those night, excuses that you go. use? Like, all right, well, we got, if we say this, we can never say it again. We're, no one's ever going to believe the transponder excuse twice. Are you are you willing to blow it on me <laughs> doing the mag room? Yes. Ed, okay. we can all right, I'm, I'm about to hit send. You know, this is it. No more transponder excuse. <laughs> That's a good one. That is a trump card in the excuse world. <laughs> yeah, and her power went up. But if the transponder exploded, I don't even know how she still texted us. I feel like that would just a little blow. fishy, don't you think? I feel like that would just blow everything out. Yeah, for I, miles. The very first thing I thought was like, "Oh, well, how'd you get in touch with Jared?" Then? Maybe we'd see it on the news. And then my mom, she told us all. And my mom texted back, "Oh, that sounds so scary. Are you okay?" Mm, so she even texted the family. Yeah, transponder. Yeah, well, you got to cover all. I'm telling you, if you say a transponder explodes in your yard, (laughs) you have to. That's it. You can't use that ever. It's like your grandmother dying. I can't ever say my grandmother died again. Twice. Well, you could do that twice. So if you go, are you going to your sister's this weekend at all? So there should probably be an exploded uh, (laughs) electrical box in her backyard, right? Right. I think so. so if I go, if I show up on Christmas Day and there's not metal everywhere and a big black fire in the backyard, I know uh, she did this. I know she just wanted to not be on the show, right? But seriously, when I go, <laughs> there should be some electrical issues, right? Do you think she'll have to play it? I don't think that. I feel like she should have to cancel have Christmas. Such an easier excuse out there. This is Laura. You know we're coming down there in a day and a half. This is gonna. This is gonna be hard, be hard for you. I She's gonna have to light something this. on fire. I just yeah. When we got that text, you know we we were we were gonna do that Christmas story that we did with Emma and Brad, and we were gonna do something with my sister. We were going to do like, trivia. It was going to be you and your sister. That's why you lost, really. Yeah, because she's way dumber than I am. Oh, you don't think As is, She just used her transponder excuse for, <laughs> for, for getting out of this show. Yes, she's dumber than I am. Nice. I could have lied way better than that. Should have used it to like get out of your wedding. or Something. Something way bigger than an episode yeah. of on the Magra. When your illegitimate child shows up and you need to help with... Well, I feel like raising that's my, it. That's what I have to come up with an excuse. Not <laughs> nice. Worry. You're going to be blowing transponders all over. <laughs> when Transpon- I had the transponder blood to help people out, I'd save three lives. Honey, you're so fortunate that you've never been in a transponder <laughs> accident before. Look, I wouldn't wish this upon anybody. 
this was just more fun than probably Lori being here. So it's, it's great that, or at least made me laugh harder. All right. Um, so this was great. Merry Christmas, yep. Mark. Merry thank Christmas. Thank you to Em and Brennan for being on. Yeah, tell them I said they did a great job with the song, and thank you for coming on. All right. Well, I hope everyone has a great Christmas and uh, spends time with family and enjoys it. Gathered around the gathered day. around the transponder, warming, <laughs> heating and warming the family with the glow. You have a transponder, transponder explosion. Yeah. The warm. Yule transponder. There you go. It's like the Hanukkah it lit for eight days. We thought it was only going to explode for one day, but it exploded for eight days in the backyard. Uh, yeah, so people spend some time with your family, put down your phone, engage your family and family members, maybe do some interpretive dances, maybe get in a tickle fight, talk about the transponder that got fixed in one day. Um, that was the real Christmas miracle. <laughs> And uh, as always, stick with the mag room and everything else is cream cheese. Are we going to do a New Year's episode next week?